Well, we're so glad that you have joined us for this Ash Wednesday worship experience here as we begin our Lenten journey together. Uh, this is Fuqua Verena United Methodist Church. Maybe you're a part of our church and this is a regular place where you worship, or uh, perhaps you were just looking for an Ash Wednesday opportunity and happened to stumble upon us. However you found us, we're glad you're here. If this is your first time with us or your first time in a long time, uh, we would love for you to text us and let us know that you're here. You can just text the word hello uh, to the number that's right here at the bottom of your screen. We'd love, as always, to get back Back in touch with you if we can answer any of your questions or uh, help you engage your faith or the community around you. If we can answer questions about Lent, really whatever we can do, uh, we'd love to be able to help you with that. So just feel free to shoot us a text. Um, as we enter into this worship service together, uh, wh whenever you're watching this, whether it's in the morning, in the middle of the day, or maybe it's uh, in, the, in the cool of the evening, um, I would invite you to find a quiet place, uh, to be in a place where you can set aside some time free of distractions, maybe silence your phone, uh, maybe turn off a light or two, uh, maybe close a door, whatever it is, uh, just find yourself some space uh, so that as we're worshiping together in this moment, uh, you can make yourself fully available and fully present uh, to the work of worshiping and offering our honor and glory to God. Uh, from dust you have come and to dust you shall return. Repent and believe the good news. Sometimes it doesn't always feel that way. Uh, and yet I think it's ever more important in moments like this uh, that we come to a place where we're ready to confront the most difficult things in our life. And so uh, bravo to you for taking that opportunity uh, in a moment of worship to do just that. And so I'm glad that we're here. And even though we might all be watching this in different places or perhaps even at different times, I give thanks that through the spirit of God, we can all worship together in this moment. Yeah. 
It's so good to be here with you today. My name is Hope, and I serve as one of the pastors here. Thank you so much for joining us for our Ash Wednesday service. If I'm honest, I've had a lot of mixed emotions around Ash Wednesday this year. In some ways, it feels more important than ever to be able to mark this day at the beginning of Lent, where we remember our own mortality and where we are reminded that from dust we came and to dust we shall return. And then in other ways, the fact that today is just one more reminder of our mortality can feel utterly exhausting to me. A part of me feels like this year we should have just all been able to get a free pass on Ash Wednesday because we've been forced for the whole last year to keep death before our eyes in a way that perhaps we never have before. At least for me, it has been pretty hard to not think about the fact that from dust we came and to dust we shall return. As I'm recording this, we have reached the grim marker of 10,000 deaths from COVID-19 just here in North Carolina. That number includes members of our very own family. It includes people that I knew and loved and many more people that my family and my friends knew and loved. I'm sure the same is true for you. Friends, it is in this context of grief upon grief, of loss upon loss, that we find ourselves today for this Ash Wednesday. Even if we personally have not lost loved ones, collectively we have just lost so much in this last year. And I have to believe that this year we have experienced in a different way that the world is not as it should be. This year we have felt brokenness in our world in a heavier way. And in the midst of this brokenness, I have sensed that more than ever, we are trying to make sense of the world right now. We've been asking big questions like, why do bad things happen and why is the world not at all as it should be? And whenever I find myself asking these kinds of questions, I return again and again to scripture. The narrative of scripture helps to root me in times like this when it just feels a bit more disorienting. And as you may know, we are in the midst of our initiative to read the Bible in a year. And this week's reading includes Genesis chapter 3, which is what is most commonly referred to as the fall story. In this story, we recognize that we thought that we could be better than God. 
We thought we could play the role of God. And in the process of this, uh, we fractured our own relationship with God. In the first two chapters of scripture, the world was in a state of harmony and shalom. Everything had worked together in the way that it should and that it was intended to. And until we get to this third chapter, we see that we have turned away from God, fracturing our own relationship with God. And from this point on, things are different. Things are not as they should be. And the whole rest of the narrative of Scripture is about restoring communion and right relationship with God. You might be familiar with this phrase that we say at Ash Wednesday. It is, dust you are and dust you shall return. And interestingly enough, this phrase actually comes right here in Genesis 3. After Adam and Eve have been kind of banned from the garden after they've turned away from God, God says in Genesis chapter 3, verse 19, By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread until you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken. You are dust, and to dust you shall return. If you are new to Ash Wednesday, you may be wondering why on this random Wednesday we remember that we are dust. And today marks the beginning of Lent, which is why we here on this random Wednesday are talking about dust. Here at the beginning of Lent, we remember these truths in part as a means of preparation for Easter, which we celebrate at the very end of Lent. We remember today that on our own, we are just dust. And after taking time to recognize our own mortality, we can begin to understand what the resurrection of Jesus at Easter means for our very own lives. Through spending this time remembering that on our own, dust is the end of our stories, we can more fully anticipate Easter in the resurrection that is to come. At Easter, we celebrate that dust is not the end of our personal nor our collective stories. The saving and reconciling work of Jesus gives us the kind of life that triumphs over death, so that even in the midst of a world that feels not at all as it should be, we can remember the truth, the worst thing is never the last thing. I don't know how you are showing up in this season. Maybe you are overwhelmed by your own finitude already. Or maybe you shy away more often from this fact and try to ignore it. The season of Lent that begins today is intended to be a season for spiritual preparation and renewal. So wherever you are, wherever you kind of find yourself and however you are showing up today, I hope that you can know that today, this season can be a fresh start for you. It can be a season of taking on new practices or a season of giving up things. If you were like me in the last year, kind of so much of what was normal had been stripped away. And in some ways, I feel like because of that, because of giving up so many things, I've been able to see more clearly what is right in front of me and indeed what is more important that is right in front of me. And I hope that perhaps by giving things up in this season that you too might be able to see more clearly perhaps even to see God more clearly in your midst. Perhaps you need um, a practice like this that helps make you more aware of God. Maybe that looks like giving things up or perhaps giving of your time and mental energy and capacity to be able to spend more time with God instead of spending time with things that more often separate you from God. Perhaps you add a practice that brings you back home to God instead of giving things up. Maybe this practice that you add can help you find a home in God, a home, a comfort, and a place of rest anew in this season. Maybe this looks like set-apart time to read scripture or to pray daily. Uh, Perhaps you want to join us for Bible in a Year coming up as we begin this journey of reading through scripture together. Perhaps this can be a fresh start for you. Regardless of whether you decide to take up a new practice or to give up something else in this season, I hope that you are able to see clearly just how loved and held and known you are by our Most High God, the one who breathed into each of us the breath of life. I hope that as we journey through this season that you will know day after day, that God desires so deeply to be in communion, to be in community with you, with us, that not even death 
can ever separate us from the love of God. Even though we turned away from God, God continues to chase after us, to come, to desire to be with us. And when we get to the end of this season, we will get to see um, that lived out even more clearly. Friends, may you go in peace. May you go to remember that we are but dust. May you find space to connect with God in this season. May you go to live a holy Lent. May you do so in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
Hello friends. If we haven't had a chance to meet yet, my name is Alex Lee and I have the privilege of serving as the Director of Youth and Family Ministries here at Bavumsi. I'm so thankful for the opportunity to worship with all of you today for our Ash Wednesday service, especially during the middle of the pandemic. Though our worship may look different from years past, I'm grateful for the gifts of the church and thinking of creative ways for us to experience uh, the first day in our Lenten journey together. Now, if you're watching this right now, it means you've tuned in to our on-demand Ash Wednesday service. Some of you may be heading over to the church uh, once you're done watching this to participate in our drive-through events. Or maybe some of you actually have already done that and you're watching this after the fact. There also may be many of you who are at home and unable to come to the drive through event for a variety of reasons. Um, our church wants to make sure that those of you who are at home also have a chance to experience Ash Wednesday in a meaningful way. And hey, even if you are coming to the drive through event, you are more than welcome to double dip and do this at home as well. Ash Wednesday is a day in our Christian journey to reflect upon our finitude, that from dust we were made and to dust we shall return. The ashes that are usually imposed on our foreheads serve as a reminder that we are dust, that we were created from the earth. So to begin our Lenten journey for 2021, we invite you to find a large bowl at home and to head over to your yard, uh, your garden, maybe a nearby park, and to collect and gather some soil. Get enough soil to fill a, that large bowl, just like this one I have here in front of me. In collecting the soil, we're going, to direct, we're going directly to the source of our creation, the ground. Now, once you've collected the soil, bring it inside the house carefully. Don't want to get it all over that new carpet, right? And instead of self-imposing the ashes, we're actually going to invite you to put your hands in the soil and to hold it. Close your eyes and feel the grittiness of the soil in your hands and between your fingers. And while you have your hands in the soil, take a moment to meditate, to confess, and to pray, keeping in mind that this soil connects us to our mortality and death and that our death is hidden in the everlasting life of Jesus Christ. Once you're done praying, we're not finished with the bowl of soil yet. We invite you to hold on to this bowl throughout the season of Lent and through Holy Week. Find somewhere in your house to put the bowl, maybe a place of prayer, or perhaps somewhere that is sacred and, or central to your daily life. And until Easter, we invite you to tend to and care for the soil. That may look like placing a cross in the soil or placing a picture of a loved one who has gone before. Or maybe if, you're, uh, if you have a green thumb, not like me, maybe you can even use the soil to plant a seed. Be creative uh, with how you want to tend to your soil, remembering though that this act is symbolic of our spiritual growth and maturation during the season of Lent. We hope this practice will be meaning for you not only today, but through the entirety of your Lenten journey. And remember always that though we, that though we may be apart, our praise, our collective acts of worship do not cease. Until next time, friends. Bye. Well, thank you to Alex for those words and that reminder. Um, and thank you to everyone who was a part of making this uh, on-demand Ash Wednesday worship moment possible. We hope that you found something in it that is worthwhile and meaningful that can set your journey off in the right direction as we journey through these 40 days together. Uh, please know that uh, this is a church that's praying for you. Uh, and so if there's anything that we can do to partner with you uh, in these next 40 days of a journey or in your journey of faith, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. Again, you can 
can text the number that's here at the bottom of your screen, and we'd love to get back in touch with you and see how we can help you as we journey along together. Uh, we do have today, uh, over the course of Ash Wednesday, two in-person drive through opportunities. And so you can check our website, feumc.org, uh, if you'd like to come through and receive ashes, if, um, if this is just kind of the first part of your worship. Uh, we tried to make it so that both parts could stand on their own and be complete. And we believe that this worship is honoring to God and that your time and your presence here is indeed. And so uh, blessings on you as you enter into this uh, Lenten journey uh, with us together. And just know that we pray that the mercy and the grace of God uh, that long preceded us will follow you with you uh, in these 40 days to come. Grace and peace.